A well-known rule for working out sides and angles of a triangle is known as the cosine rule. And basically, if you have your three sides, let's say A, B and C, and the angle between any two adjacent sides is given, then there is a relationship that exists between the three sides and the angle. And there it is. C squared equals A squared plus B squared minus 2AB cos theta. So that means given any three of those values, you can work out the fourth value. As an example, let's suppose the angle is 60 degrees and the two sides A and B are 5 and 6. Making the substitution into our formula and then simplifying the right hand side, 31. So C will be the square root of 31, approximately 5.57. You may have used this rule many times and you may even have come across proofs or the derivation of the rule using algebra. We're going to derive the rule, the cosine rule, using vector notation. But before we do that, we need to understand some properties of vectors. And one of them is known as the dot or the scalar product. So here in our diagram, we have two vectors labeled A and B and the angle between them is theta. The axes i and j represent unit vectors in each direction, so a unit vector in this direction, in the i direction, and any vector vertically would be in the j direction. Vector a can be represented in terms of components a1 and a2, as we have here, and similarly for vector b. And the dot of the scalar product is defined to be a dot b equals the magnitude of a times the magnitude of b times the cosine of the angle between them. And we can derive the magnitude of a and b from our diagram because each involves a right angle triangle. So if we look at the triangle that has vector a on the hypotenuse end, we have our right angle triangle. There we are. Using Pythagoras' theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, we can work out that the magnitude of a will be the square of this side, which will be a1 squared, plus the square of this side, which will be a2 squared. And then, of course, we take the square root. And we can do the same thing for finding the magnitude of b. Another definition for the dot product is that it is a1 times b1 plus a2 times b2, which means the product of the components. Both are valid and we're going to use both definitions in our proof. But again, before we do that, we need to understand two properties of vectors. The first one is the commutative property, which means a dot b is the same as b dot a. If we were looking at the set of real numbers, you might think of things like 2 times 3 equals 3 times 2 under multiplication or 2 plus 3 equals 3 plus 2. So the same rule applies for vectors that a dot b will give you the same value as b dot a. And we can show that to be true. By our definition of a dot b, the first definition, it equals the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B times the cosine of the angle. Because magnitude of A and B are just given values, we can write them in that order as well. And of course, this is now our definition for B dot A. So we've shown that A dot B equals B dot A. The other property, the second property that we need to understand is the distributive law and basically you might know that as expanding brackets. So here we have one pair of brackets to expand. We multiply or take the dot product of the first two values or the first two terms and then the second two. The proof of this is slightly longer but not too difficult. Let's work it out. We can write vectors A, B and C in component form in terms of unit vectors I and J. First work out b plus c, vectors b plus c, as you can see, is b1 plus c1 in the i direction plus b2 plus c2 in the j direction. And then if we take the dot product of b plus c with vector a, 
this is what we obtain and then we can expand each pair of brackets and then a bit of reorganization it looks like that the brackets are only there to show you the grouping not necessary and then of course that bracket represents a dot b and this bracket represents a dot c like that so we've proved the distributive law or the distributive property for vectors now we come to the proof to use vector properties to derive the cosine rule here's our triangle again but this time the sides are represented by vectors and hence the arrows so we start by writing vector c in terms of vector a and vector b so c will be a minus b and then we take the dot product of both sides like that and then apply our definition for the dot product firstly on the left c dot c is the magnitude of c times the magnitude of c times the cosine of the angle between them which i'm calling alpha and then when we expand the brackets on the right hand side using our distributive law in this manner we obtain these four terms and we can simplify the four terms on the right a dot a using our definition of the dot product will give us magnitude of a times magnitude of a times the cosine of the angle between them which is beta and then these two terms using the property that a dot b is the same as b dot a we can write as 2 times the magnitude of a times the magnitude of b cos theta theta is given in the diagram and finally at the end negative b times negative b is positive and b dot b by our definition is magnitude of b times magnitude of b times the cosine of the angle between them which we're calling gamma on the left side vector c we have two vectors here c and c same vector which means the angle between them is zero so we can put zero for alpha and similarly the angle between vector a and a is zero and at the end the vector between b and b is zero so we can write zero for the angle now cos of zero is one so we can replace all of that by one and we can do the same thing here and there and when we've done that this is the expression we obtain and just to make things a bit clearer remembering that each of these represent magnitudes we can let a be the magnitude of vector a b is the magnitude of vector b and c is the magnitude of vector c and making those replacements we obtain what we know is the cosine rule there's a neat relatively short and direct way of deriving the cosine rule using vector properties your challenge is to find a similar sort of proof or other sort of proof using vector properties for the sine rule and let me know in the comments how you go until next time bye bye